And now, weighing in out of the blue corner, Josh the Pong Thompson. 100% agree. And on the other mic, he weighs in from the red corner, Big John McCarthy. Well, hello and welcome to everyone. It is the Weighing In Podcast. My man Josh Thompson is sitting there all nice and warm and toasty in his beautiful studio with someone that he can actually reach out and touch sitting Whack. behind him. Podcast Whack. Dave ready to get walloped. Walloped, I tell you, if he says anything smart. We're going to see what happens. This could be a filmed assault. Yes. I cannot wait to find out if it's going to happen. My oh, man, gonna what's happen. up? It's going to happen. It's, it's going to Dave happen. just, he can't he, seem to bite his tongue. Even if he doesn't deserve it. No, no, yeah, exactly, exactly. I want to give the, I want to give everyone a show. I'm going to let everyone know what it's like to be bullied beat down. I'm just going to oh. give him, bam, bam, bam. Yeah. He's been, he's been bullying me for years. I got to let him know what it's like to, to beat him down. <laughs> oh, this guy. It's like old been? times. You guys are in the same room. See, I know. I kind of miss those days, man. We had some fun times. I was, and what I loved the most was he was within arm's length, pretty much. I could just stand up and just reach over the table and give him a good smack. <laughs> so it just, felt, it always felt great. I always knew that he was just right there, and I was able to do it. He couldn't talk all that shit. Um, John, this is gonna be this can be a interesting two interesting two weeks with um. With all the fights that are coming up, we've got Bellator on CBS. We've got the you know UFC this weekend. Um, does the UFC have a show next weekend? Yes, they do. It, it must not be. It must be out of out of the country. It must be in another. Can you look oh, that up, I Dave? They do. Yeah, the let's go, right Dave. There. You need to hurry Apex. up, buddy, because you're right behind me. I can give you a good whack anytime, buddy. Well, hold hold the phone. <laughs> hold the phone here, because this fight with Derek Lewis. And Spivak is on the fourth. Oh, so th- so there is no fights this weekend. There is no fight this weekend. That's kind of a smart play the by fourth. the by the by the UFC, though. Kind of a smart play. A lot of media, a lot of stuff going on with it with with the NFL right now. You got the the three, four, sorry, the four best teams. Obviously, the Chiefs being the best team, but you got the the four, you got the four by, best you're going teams. Down. I know they are. They are our kryptonite, man. The Cincinnati oh, man. Bengals are our kryptonite, dude. It they are drives me crazy, man. Mister Joe Cool, Joe Burrow, man. He's he's legit. Joe he's good. he is. Legit. I was I was a little hesitant of him coming out of out of LSU because ah. he had such great receivers. He had a great line. He, he had true. He had great players. But man, he has he had an but, arm that showed you he could he could be so good. You yeah, give him time. You give him you know some protection. You you put someone that's going to catch the ball. He'll yeah. put it in the spot it needs to be. Well, let's not forget last weekend he won. He got uh, not this last weekend, the weekend before he got sacked nine times and they still won. Well, so and it's that's, not that's the whole good. thing. He, look, he's been sacked a ton. Yeah, yeah, a ton, and he continues on. He's a tough dude. Yeah, he is a tough dude, tough kid. So, um, hopefully we get him out of there though. That's and he's I'm an MMA with. fan, so that just makes him somebody. Is else. he really? Is he oh, really? You would yeah, think, Mister Mister Cigar and Sunglasses. You would no, think he is an he MMA fan. He comes to the shows. That's awesome. But hey, before we get started on the actual show and start breaking down fights, go to WayneInMerch.com, pick up some of our hoodies, our shirts, our new designs, got hats, we've got it all, so go ahead and check it out. We're going to try to get up some sweats and some other apparel up there as soon as possible. Uh, John and I keep talking about it, but we've just been slammed with doing VOs and all the other stuff that go on Ooh. with these big shows. So, we're having a good time, but uh, do you want to get into the fight first? Do you want to get into some news, Dave? Dave can't turn his mic we're, on because it'll turn the echo news. in, but Dave, what do you want to do? You want to go news first, Dave? I thought you were turning your mic off. You could just turn and talk to me. He's got that echo. Dave's 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 a total shit show. He's out of his he's out of his element right now. He's not. He's just being in the studio. He doesn't want to get close to you. You see what I'm saying? You're gonna do the Floyd fight first, and then uh, and then we'll just go through all the. All right, right. Floyd. All right, Floyd Mayweather taking on another champ. (laughs) Oh, never mind. (laughs) Aaron Chalmers. Jordy Shores from Newcastle. Isn't isn't that in Newcastle? He's from Newcastle, yes. Yeah, he Jordy is from Newcastle. Shores is what it's called. It's kind of like a takeoff on Jersey mm-hmm. Shores. He is a man, he's a he's a well known and influential person there. Fought in Bellator MMA, has switched it over to boxing because look, he was more of a stand up guy anyways, yeah. and it was really when he f- went to the ground he ended up getting submitted. So he went to boxing. This is a fight you look at as as far as I know. Aaron Chalmers has fought at middleweight, 160 pounds as a boxer. 
You know, is it a step up for Floyd as far as size? Yes. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. The skill level is just so dramatically different. And that's taking nothing away from Aaron Chalmers. Look, tough guy. He believes, you know, he he's he absolutely has committed himself to his boxing. It's just, you know, even at the age that Floyd is, he's forgotten more than fucking Chalmers has ever learned in the boxing mm. ring. Yeah, I, I was when I saw this, I was like, wow, this is this is interesting. Um, Chalmers got a little bit of power, you know. Um, he fought at fifty fives. He's he's you have, you know, obviously he doesn't have the skill level that, but that Floyd to have does. No to have one, power. No you have to be able yeah. to land, right? Yeah, and that's very true. Yeah, <laughs> and Floyd's what fifty now? Yeah, is he fifty now? Yeah, I think he is, right? He is. I mean, he's extremely talented. He's, you know, Floyd's just at a different level than boxers when they were full time boxing from the time they were three years old, and now you're putting him against these reality stars, which is great. I love the fact that he's he's schooling these young bucks. I like Chalmers. He's a nice guy. Oh, he's forty five. Forty five. I thought he. I, honestly, I thought he. I, I thought he was saying. close, closing down on fifty. So I, yeah, I definitely thought so wrong. too. Um, but when I look at this, I mean Chalmers. He, I look at it almost, almost like a very similar to a uh, Conor McGregor fight. He can land the one shot, but I don't know if the way that Floyd moves, the way that Floyd rolls with things, the way he blocks and covers. John, I'm not saying he's going to win. There's just I no know, way. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not saying no you way. are. I'm just I, I'm no liking way. all this stuff. You know, look, yeah. if he can land the shot and stuff. Mm -mm. Yeah. And the, and, well, Josh, this is the whole point, and this is, again, <laughs> levels to everything, yep. and you know. I like I used to I used to spar with professional boxers. Mm -hmm. And you'll get some guys that they're they're brawlers, they're they're a boxer, but they're a brawler and they will mm -hmm. stand and they're a they're a trade a shot to give a shot guy because that's how they get their wins. And then there are those guys that are boxers, guys like Andre Ward, guys like Floyd Mayweather, guys that did not get into boxing to prove how tough they were. Mm -hmm. They got into boxing to prove I can outbox you. Yeah. And you're not going to be able to touch me. And you know, it is so hard to hit a good boxer with a clean shot. You can touch him. You can hit him in the you know, shoulders, arms. You'll hit him in the chest. A little bit to the It is so hard to get that clean shot on him. And when you do, it happens once. And if it's not perfect, it's like, well, yeah. we're right back to square one. Yeah, I mean, another example is like Tyson Fury. For such a big guy, he rolls oh. his shoulders very well. He hides over his his shoulders. He's a tall mountain of a man. What is he like? Almost six, nine. six eight, six, six nine. nine. Yeah, he's a big, big guy. But I mean, it's very rare you can catch him with a big shot. When Wilder yep. caught him, right, and put him down, yep. he rose up like the Undertaker. I mean, he just he he literally like he was rose up from the dead after that shot. Everyone thought he was done. Nope. He just kind of looked at the sky, looked up at the ceiling, and goes, "You know what? I can get up," and just got up. But it's very rare that you were able to catch a great boxer, someone that has been doing this since they were young, yeah. um, that clean. And he was he got caught, but he was able to get back up, which is very rare also against anyone that's fought Wilder. But with Floyd, Floyd Floyd's just going to touch these kids up. He's been doing it for a while now. Yeah, not boxing. I understand that, but just with the with these younger kids or these TV stars, he's letting them know, "Hey, who's your daddy?" Oh, and he's yeah. going to touch them. He's just going to play with them a little bit, and then he's going to get them out of there. He's going to collect his money. I got to be honest. This is kind of fun for me, only because he started off doing this with uh, the, the the Japanese star, Tension, right? Tension. Well, he started off with Connor. He started yeah. off with Connor, and he realized how True. much money he can make by fighting these but guys he, that have big mouths and big followings. He was actually still fighting with a boxing record on yeah. the line at yeah. that time with Connor. Then with like Tension, that's just it's exhibition. Yeah. Everything yeah. he does is exhibition. He went tension, then he went uh uh the the Paul brother, uh Logan. Then he go Logan, I think, after that. And then he did then he did the Indian star, in I believe. There. I think he had like an Indian star. Yeah, it was like an Indian T V star. Yeah. I think is what it was. And now now he's fighting Chalmers. He had a he, the la last one he had, he had one in Ryzen. He he did again. It was a Oh he did, that's right. Japanese uh fighter. Yeah. I can't remember who it was, mm -hmm. but Yeah, hey. I can't blame him. He's making money. I, yeah, I believe when he fought Tension, right? They paid him six or nine million dollars. Something was it six or nine, I believe. That guy, he flew in. He wanted to try and get back to the to Vegas by New Year's, so he got him out of there quick. Jumped on his private jet and was gone before before. And he he was he landed back in Vegas before New Year's. Yeah, absolutely. That's pretty crazy. That's pretty. <sighs> man, it must be nice. It must be nice yeah. to be that rich. There it was. Asakura. That's the he, fought, he fought Asakura. Ah. Yeah. So, uh, like I said, Chalmers, everyone's got a puncher's chance. He's got he's got a little bit more power than people give him credit for. I mean, I'm just saying, 
outside of a, a random weird fluke thing, he gets caught. I'm just saying. He's got he's got he's got some power. Chalmers does. So he's able to if he can land the shot, I don't think he can. Hands. Yeah, I don't think he can, obviously. I mean, I don't think anyone believes that he can. But um but the but the power is there. So yeah. I did notice when I when I when I commentated his fights or when I was calling his fights, he would uh he loads up a lot, he swings for the fences, leaves himself out of position a lot. Now maybe he's cleaned that all up since fighting MMA. I've watched but, I, I've watched him in the boxing ring. He's cleaned it up a lot. Okay. Okay. You know, a lot. So okay. but and again, yeah, he's cleaned it up. Uh, he's gonna have a hard time. Yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. <laughs> just, just all right, honest. all right. We we spent enough time on that. Yeah, <laughs> Dave, talk to us. That's What's true. next, Dave? Oh, here Valentina we go. Valentina Chevchenk oh, against Alexa Grasso. Mm. I actually really like this fight. I love what Alexa Grasso has been doing. I know, I know, I know what you're gonna I say, know. and I don't blame you. And you're right. I'm telling mm. you, you're right before it even happens. Yep. But if you're gonna look at a style that can possibly you know, give Valentina a good fight. I think Alexa Grasso was part of it. Her wrestling has gotten damn good. She's actually using takedowns. I don't think she's as good, you know, on the ground as Valentina. But her stand up, she'll she'll sit and she'll trade shots. Yeah. Who else are you gonna put against this woman except someone outside of her weight class? Yeah, John. I think that uh, I think Alexa Grasso is a fantastic fighter. She brings a lot to the table. She has developed her wrestling, her jujitsu game. He's gotten a lot better. Her yep. striking is very good. But on all levels, she's not as good as Valentina Shevchenko. All levels, across the board. The wrestling, yeah, I, I the knew you were going to say that. And, and, and the right. striking. You're right. Um, I, I admit it. She Alexa has gotten better at slipping punches, countering the punches. She's gotten better at imposing her will. But she will not be able to impose her will against Valentina Shevchenko. Valentina's just going to walk her down, touch her up. And then if she needs to, which I think she, right away, she's just going to take her down. Dominate the top position. Alexa Grasso, I think, can could be good at from the top position herself, but I think she's gonna she's not gonna be good enough at defending those takedowns against someone like Valentina. She's just too dominant. She's too dominant everywhere. I don't see this fight going well. I actually don't see this fight getting out of maybe the third round. Well, it is it's the stand up game of Valentina that makes her grappling actually better, uh -huh. makes her takedowns more effective. The way she uses her hands to get into the clinch position, and, and she always I don't know how. But she always seems to get her hands locked behind, you know, the back of her opponent. So she gets the trip takedown. She gets the body lock takedowns. She's just, you know, she's she's head and shoulders above everyone in that weight class. It seems like now she did have, you know, her last fight had a tough fight. You know, that was a tough fight. That was. But, I'm surprised they didn't again, run that one back. Well, yeah, I am too. But again, you take a look and look. It's one of those we talk about it all the time. Mm -hmm. Fighting is a different, you know, it's a different sport than everyone's because you. Everyone's going to have a bad day. Mm -hmm. As a champion, you're going to have a bad day. And it's those fights that you're a champion and you have the bad day and you still make it out of it. You know, Anderson Silva, when he fought Chael Sonnen, look, take a look at that fight. Chael was winning that fight easily going, you know, into that fifth round and Anderson found a way, mm -hmm. you know, not his night came back and showed exactly what he could do on his night. And you're going to have those nights. And so to sit there and think that, oh, Valentina is dropping down, I don't think she's dropping down. I think she had a bad night. It wasn't, you know, all the biorhythms or whatever are not all in line. Don't expect that same fighter to be showing up against Grasso. Well, John, I, I remember the, the Chael and the Anderson fight. And, and, and honestly, until that fight, I was on the same thinking that Chael was. that I've won 14 minutes of this. And if you just tap cable 14. restart, 14. 14, 14, or sorry. It was, yeah, 24 he, minutes. He won Sorry, 23 24. minutes of it. 23 minutes. Or I thought once you tap, right, you just tap and then you restart and then, Eli you know, and then you won. I won. I won the rest of the fight. So, I mean, obviously okay. I've won. I mean, fine. You won that round, but I won okay. the other four. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm under the chail and, uh, idea that that's how the scoring goes. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, I know you wrote the rules and you, you know, and you helped with all this stuff, but I mean, you guys must have missed that part where you, I you should have added that, that in. Yeah. No, and there's yeah. no doubt I missed that part. I probably should, uh, you talk should to make people some about rewriting things, make adjustments. You should, exactly. you should, because I feel like that was an error in your in your mistake. You know, so, you know that's people. actually okay. It's funny that you think about it though. Yes. Remember old Pancrase? Yes, I do. Pancrase. That's when you touch the rope, you're out of the submission, right? Oh, you get the shit. you get the mark against I, you in the score. I totally forgot about but that. But the submission is off, and so guys would sit there and they would get put. You know, they were they were a good striker. 
they would always do all their work against the ropes. Because yeah. That way they could reach out, put a foot on it, put a hand on it, and they got out of the position. Wow. I forgot about those. Yeah. I forgot about those. But to go back to Grosso and Shevchenko, I just think the physical strength of Valentina, who she's had to deal with before in the past. No doubt. And just that maturity just level I think. of competition. Yeah, the level of competition. I think Alexa is fantastic. I think she's potentially the future champ. Wherever Valentina decides to retire, wherever she decides to go, I could see that fight. I could see her potentially being the champ because she's still young. I want to say she's what, 26, 27? Yeah, how old is, uh, how old is Grosso there, Dave? I think she's probably around 27, somewhere around there. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, so 29. Yeah. So she's not she's not as young as I thought. No, I thought she's she right in her prime. To, oh, gotcha. She is. She's right in her prime. We'll see. I mean, she's she's a fantastic fighter, though. She's a fantastic fighter. So I think the physical strength, though, of Shevchenko is going to be the difference, whether she's going to take it where she wants, with the power and the punches, as well as the strength and the wrestling. But it, it's, if you're taking a look and you're a UFC matchmaker, it's a good matchup. It's, it's the only matchup yeah. in that division that you can look and say, are people going to be interested in it? I'm interested in it because I want to see how Alexa yeah. does against her. So I think I'm interested matchup. just because I want to see Alexa. <laughs> Uh, that all right. Would, that would be my man, Josh yeah. Thompson. Hey, just speak, <laughs> let's just speak the truth. I know everyone else is thinking that. <laughs> why, why am I going to sit around here and sugarcoat it for you guys? Come on. Exactly. All right. What else you got for us, Dave? Dave, I love I can just reach back and smack you in the back of the head. Now, this <laughs> is a matchup that was made off of the Weighing In podcast, yes. if you recall. Yes. What did I say was the fight I'd like to see? I, you know, well, technically, I said it, but go ahead. You can take, oh, you can God, take credit for man, it. Look go at ahead. you. You are absolutely <laughs> it's the right. biggest Fucking right. Homer, even for yourself when you like. I am, I am. It's you have to. If you don't love yourself, who's gonna love yourself? Jesus. Me. No one else gonna love you like me. I love myself. I love myself. Do you? Yes, I do. Absolutely. Well, at least there's one. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. What else? Do you, so, so, uh, Jan versus Dalasili. I mean, fantastic fight. Great. Fantastic fight. This is one of those. You know, Dalasili. Marab is so consistent. <laughs> With the way I saw what fights. you did there, John. I see what you did there. What did I do? <laughs> Davashili is, is, is a big word. So let's just go right with Marab. Well, let's just what, use Marab. No, what's, what's funny is <laughs> I used to have a real problem with uh-huh. as as saying that name. But there's there's a the best arm wrestler in the world is also mm. from Georgia. Mm. And uh, he's got a very tough name to say. But I can now say it because I've said his. Ah. So... Uh, I, Marab's name has gotten so much easier for me. But Marab, <laughs> Marab against Jan is just a fantastic matchup. Def, definite, you know, contrasting styles. And it's a matter of can Marab get Jan to the ground, use his superior, you know, grappling, because he's the better grappler, mm-hmm. and he's got a pace. He brings the pressure throughout the fight. And that can be exhausting, you know, to someone that's trying to land that perfect shot. Jan cannot get into that. I need. To, I want to one shot this guy and put him out. He needs to get into the touch, touch, and just keep on making him feel this, mm-hmm. making him miss, fight off the takedowns. But I love this number two against number three. This is the way it should be. Yeah, you know, I mean, you're going to end up with these type of fights, and then uh, this is the way it should be. This, is, but do you recall we were all sitting back? I don't know, eight months ago, maybe nine months ago. And just saying, man, I, I don't think there's anyone in this weight class right now that can beat Jan. Yeah. And and now, you know, and now we're just talking about, man, there's a good chance that Marab beats him. Absolutely. If Marab is able to take him down over and over again and keep that pace on him. Because what I've seen from Jan is he's good when he's the hammer. But as the fight goes on, as the fight goes on, because he's the hammer, he can pace himself and go when he wants because people are afraid of his power, his ability to stop takedowns, his ability to foot sweep you when he wants. And he's got vicious ground and pound when he does get on top. Look at what he did to Jose Aldo when he got on top. He can do work and he can do damage. But when Marab, he's going to be in, he's going to be out, he'll strike a little bit, but then he'll be grinding on that fence. He'll be grinding on those takedowns. He'll be doing all of those things. That I think will potentially start to slow Yawn down. It'll make it harder for Yawn to be the hammer. I'm having problems here. Absolutely. Yes. Time you for know, a new mic, buddy. Eh, well, <laughs> you're stubborn. It, it's <laughs> something with my wire. <laughs> but it is. Uh, it's absolutely in that realm where you're saying that you know people for you know, and we were part of the people. We were one saying, man, I don't know if there's anybody out there that can beat this guy. Well, Aljamain Sterling has proved he can beat him. 
And then, you know, you're taking a look at Sean O'Malley. A lot of people will, you know, look at it. The, look, he got the win. So you got to say, well, at least he was close enough that he could beat him. He was right in that, that realm of beating him. So Peter Yawns, you know, that, that, that just level of, you know, invulnerability, the fact that, oh, he can't be, no, it's really been shown that, you know what, you fight the right fight. You can beat him, and mm -hmm. Davos Vili has got the style. If he can implement that style and make it work, which he's been able to do with a ton of guys, if he can do that, he can get that win. But what do you do, John? That's the he, problem. What, you, it, yeah. what do you do if he does win? Yeah, no. Then, like, you're kind of just kicking out all the ones. But then again, the, the UFC doesn't really want to see uh, Jan and I think Sterling again for the third time. Not yet, anyways. No. I think if he does, they're hoping, I think, Jan beats Marab, and then you can push Marab down a little bit more. So it takes Marab away from Sterling for a little bit. But uh, I don't know if they're ready to push Jan right into that title shot. You got, you got, uh, you got uh, O'Malley right there at the top waiting. Yeah. That's it. Well, you supposedly you got that Henry Cejudo versus yeah. Aljamain fight. And I've heard so many different, you know, people talk about that and say, oh, it's not a, it's, you know, it's not a fight that Aljamain wins anything off of. And I'm like, have you lost your fucking mind? What do you mean he doesn't win anything off of that? Look, Aljamain is the champion, but Henry Cejudo was a two-division champion. He was the champion of the division that Aljamain is the champion of and walked away from the title. Mm -hmm. How do you say he doesn't win anything? That's a huge win mm -hmm. for Aljamain if he can get a victory over Henry Cejudo. Yeah, those I don't care are... if it's coming off you know how many years of inactivity. Don't care. Yeah, those people are stupid. Okay, thank you. Those people that say those things, they're dumb. They don't so, like you, you have an Olympic gold medalist plus... The 125 and the 135 pound champ. He walked away from it all. He's now back. He deserves to get right up in the front of, front of the line. I don't care what, what anyone says. He deserves to get right up in that front of the line. No different than how GSP was away for, I don't know, three, four years. Yeah, got, and come and comes back right and fights Bisping. Bisping. Goes right against Bisping. I'm sorry, but the, he deserved it. He's yeah. somebody that has he put had in done the it work. for how long? Yeah. And he had fought the who's who. He fought everybody. And I don't know if you guys recall, but that welterweight division was one of the most stacked divisions at the time the GSP yeah. was at the top. No it no. wasn't like he was fighting bums. He was fighting some of the Hall of Famers that are there, man. Right now, those guys are first ballot Hall of Famers, the ones that are coming out of that division. So, I mean, anywhere from Matt Hughes to... um, uh, only fought to, Matt Hughes three times. Yeah, only, fought, only three times. Though. Only three only, times. Only. But he fought BJ Penn twice. It's like... The, the, he fought. He fought the who's who. So to say that someone like um, someone like Henry doesn't deserve that automatic title shot, it's just nonsense. He deserves it. Gets in there. Now I'm not saying he's going to win. Henry has all the tools and the ability to do it. Will oh, the yeah. layoff affect him? Will his wrestling be as as good as it was from back in the day? Look, it's well, the, it's hard to keep wrestling that good, John. But but and it's not in the cage, so there is a difference. But he's not a guy that has stopped training. He's been there coaching and working mm -hmm. with guys and being the sparring partner and doing things with a lot of guys. So he's been part of the sport. And so that has a big impact in the way I look at how mm -hmm. that rust, if you're going to talk about cage rust or ring rust or whatever, it it's not quite as heavy and it's not in place as much based upon. It's not like he's been sitting on the sideline doing nothing and then now he's going back into training. He yeah. has been in the gym he owns a gym he's been training with guys and doing things so I, I i look at this it's almost like the dominant cruise ring rust is what you make of it it depends on what you've been doing and with what henry's been doing i i think he's going to come out just fine as far as we're going to see the very best we can see out of henry cejudo so i i'll take a little bit of what dominic cruz said about the ring rust not being real it is it isn't real but there is some parts that you can say that are real timing. you can never yeah the timing Speed. that's exactly what i was getting at there's nothing that you can you can't implement in training the actual real fight timing just there's so much faster it's and they're not they're really trying to take your head off in training you're not trying to knock dudes out even with the little even with the big gloves you're not trying to knock these guys out you're trying to catch them trying to give them space if they get rocked you can feel whether you rocked them or not that's where henry's gonna think gonna have a little bit of a hard time but in in saying that, the fact that 
Sterling is not a fantastic striker, that timing won't be as as much uh, in play because you know that Sterling's gonna be trying to attack the, the the takedowns. He'll be trying to get to drop on a leg, trying to get to the back, trying to press Henry to the fence to try to shuck him by and get to his back so we can get some hooks in. He's gonna try to find ways to do that, John, because on the feet, I know he's the longer fighter, but Henry's got that dog in him on the feet, and he saw and we saw that. When he fought uh, Marais. Marlon Marais, yeah. Marlon Marais. We saw I, that. Like He realized it wasn't going his way. He dug deep and just bit down on the mouthpiece. He's like, fuck it. Let's just do this. I, I agree with you in the fact that, you know, Al Jermaine on the feet, you know, that's his... When you look at all of his advantages as far as body type and everything, it's there. Mm -hmm. But Al Jermaine is a ground fighter. Mm -hmm. Now, the real problem for him is going to be how do you get this fight to where you're the best? How do you get this fight to the ground? Because to sit there and think, and this is, again, there's levels to everything, Josh, and you know it. And I take nothing away from what Al Jermaine has done throughout his career as an MMA fighter or his career as a collegiate wrestler. Collegiate wrestler. Now, Henry Cejudo was never a collegiate wrestler. Mm -hmm. Henry Cejudo was an Olympic wrestler. And there's a big fucking difference in the level between an Olympic wrestler and a collegiate wrestler. And there's a huge fucking difference in a level of a gold medalist and a guy that just makes it to the Olympics at times. Yeah. The level that he's got to make up, he's got to do, you know, the get behind, possibly he could get behind him. I, I, I do see that, you know, being as a part of it. But he's got to use his hands to hurt Henry to get into that takedown. You've got to hurt Henry to the body, something like DJ did. Mm -hmm. You know, get into the clinch with him and work the body. Do things that upset his ability to feel comfortable in the fight. Mm -hmm. That's the way Al Jermaine can get the fight to the ground. If he tries to go and get this fight to the ground the way he normally has throughout his career, this is the wrong guy to do that with. Yeah, I think when you look at, when I look at kind of stylistically, right, you're going to say, I can say Volkanovsky and Islam, a very similar style where Volk's going to be very hard to hold down because he is smaller. He is shorter in stature, but really kind of thick. And he, and what Volk does, also what Henry does fantastic is from his years of wrestling is his wrist control. His hand control and his wrist control, it makes it hard for you to actually get your hooks in. It makes it hard for you to hold. You know, you can't get the seat belt. You can't start an attack in the neck because he's got wrist control. He's able to spin in your guard and get to the top position because he has wrist control. Those are all things that Henry does very well. Just from all the years of wrestling, first thing you're doing is getting on those wrists and, and just breaking grips and making sure you don't lock your hands. That's what's going to give, I think, um, Sterling some problems. On the feet, I think Sterling's got a chance. But he's got to stay long. He's got to stay long with it. He's got to be touching him with the jab. He's got to be throwing that push kick up the middle to settle in to get uh, Henry to be so be hesitant on the takedown. So if he can throw that push kick up to the face, up the up the gut, start attacking the body like you're saying, I think that you're going to start seeing Henry get a little bit closer or say, start taking more chances, and that'll make it easier for Aljamain to start getting into that body lock or start trying to press him to the fence or just start trying to get to control to where I can kind of at least get my hands on him, try to use my size over him. We'll see what happens. But I think overall, from that fight to this fight, the the Jan fight and the Marab fight, there's a lot to there's a lot to desire right now because let's say Marab wins and then Henry wins. Now you've got two guys that love to wrestle that can set a pace. That's gonna be a fantastic fight. And if you have Aljo that wins and Marab wins, and then nothing happens. But then Jan can maybe get another shot in there if O'Malley slides in there first. Who knows? I mean, there's a lot of different ways we can go with this. But I love that Henry came in here. He's kind of, he's kind of injected a little bit of fire into this into this weight he's class. Setting the apple cart. Yes, but John, this weight class like is it. already stacked, and now you throw Henry in there. I'm like, holy, even shit. better. Even better. We got to stop talking uh, about a fight that actually isn't even fucking put out there yet, though. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Dave, what else you got, buddy? Look, I was turning around. Whoosh, whoosh. <laughs> it's straight out of like the, the, the Batman and Robin uh, uh, cartoons. Whoosh, whoosh, pow, bam, boom, pow. Bam, yeah, I like that. Bam. All right, Jared okay. Gordon, a man coming off of a fight where a lot of people thought he beat Patty Pimlet up against Bobby Green, a man coming off of a loss to Drew Dober. So both guys coming off of the loss. This is a norm for the UFC as far as we like to take two guys 
that we like as fighters. They're coming off a loss. We want to get one of them a win, put them back in that win category. Well, that's what you're seeing right here with Jared Gordon and Bobby Green. Yeah, look, even though Bobby got knocked out, when is this fight? Do we know what the April, date is on this fight? April 22nd. April? Yeah, so it was a ways away. Kind of a, kind of, okay, it is no, April, but I still away. kind of feel it's a little bit of a quick turnaround for Bobby. Bobby was out, out. It wasn't like he, you know, there was no follow up. That's how much he was out. So I just, I, I think, I think, uh, I would like to see him take a little, he is older too, John. So, yeah. you know, when you get knocked out, it's like it becomes a little bit, it comes easier and easier every time, like we talk about. This, I, this I think be, this can be a tough fight for Jared Gordon. It's going to be a very tough fight honest. for him. It's going to be a very tough fight. It's almost like the UFC's mad at him because he almost beat Patty. Thank you. They're like, oh, wait, no, let's, here, let's, like, let's pay here. you a favor. Well, and it's, it, it's, I'm serious when you take a look at it, you know, and people can say what they want. It's almost like, oh, you almost beat Patty. Well, now we're going to give you someone tougher. Yep. Because you yeah. know, Bobby Green would light Patty Pimlet up. You know, that would be a fun fight. The trash talking <laughs> in it. The, the lead up. The lead up to that. Patty is not ready for the trash talk of Bobby Green. No, he is not. <laughs> he, he is, is not. He's not ready stuff. for the for the in cage antics either. He's not oh, ready yeah. for that. He's not ready for any of that. No. Nope. Um. But he'll be out for a while, right? He's got a toe or a foot, something injury yeah, or something. Yeah, he's got some kind of ankle injury. Yeah, he's having a surgery. Like yeah. yeah. Uh, this this is gonna be a good fight, man. I think Jared Gordon he can he can stand and bang a little bit. He's got to make sure he doesn't leave himself um, wide open, doesn't load Speed's up. Speed's gonna be a problem. It will be a problem, and I think the way that and like we've said this before is that Bobby Green is so good at rolling, covering his chin with his shoulders. Uh, he leaves himself a little open against the, the fence because he squares up, which is what we saw against Drew Dober. Yep. So the way to really beat him is to back him up. Well, you that's get him exactly. backed up. Jared Gordon should take a look at what he. Take a look at the Drew Dober fight and look at what happened when Drew allowed Bobby to control where the fight was taking place. Yeah. And finally, what did Drew say? Oh, if I'm going to get hit, I'm going to get hit going forward and putting him in a position where he's not comfortable. And that's what ended up getting the win for Drew Dober. So Jared needs to take a look at that fight and say, well, I'm going to take shots. Hopefully one of them doesn't put me out, but it's the only way I can put shots on Bobby. This could be a fantastic fight, though. I'm actually kind of pumped for it now that we oh, yeah, talked no, about this, it. This I was like, ah, oh, this could be good, but not, you know, it's all no, right. I think it's, it's fun. No, I think it's Because Jared's tough. Yeah. He's no, he gamer. is. He's extremely tough. Extremely yeah. tough. Um, But, you know, I'm a Bobby Green fan because he's, like, still kind of the old school. You know, he reminds <laughs> So he just he reminds me of the old school. The Strike Force days, the early UFC days when we all, when Strike Force first went over. So I'm a Bobby Green fan. All right. What else you got for us, Dave? Ricky Simon against Song Yudong. Now, this was one that I, I was kind of surprised with because really? there was somebody that called, well, somebody called out Ricky Simon. Yeah. And said, you've been ducking me. Yep. And so I was like, well, let's see if they put that fight together. And they did not. Mm. But they didn't do Ricky any favors. You know, they put him against a guy who's very tough, very good, got a lot of power, good wrestling, and Ricky lives off of the wrestling. Now, his stand-up's gotten way better. But in this fight, this is one of those ones you can look at and say, man, I don't know. I think they have those records backwards if I'm looking mm. at those. I'm looking at Ricky Simon and Song Yudong, and it's saying that Song Yudong is 19-7-1. and one. Right. Come on. Can you is that look right? that up? There you go. Yeah, thank you. Oh, wow. Really? You have, yeah. Man, I, I didn't think he had that many losses. Well, I don't think he started off his career very well. Okay, maybe. But, you know. This is a great matchup. This is a great matchup of styles that are very similar. Is it Ricky Simon or is it Ricky Simone? I've heard both. I've heard both too. Who the hell knows? You know? Yeah. Anybody anybody in the comments section, you guys, just please go down in the comments. Write it out. Uh how do you write it out phonetically for me, please? I think that's the word I'm looking for. Am I right? That is phonetic. When you write it out phonetically? Okay. Yeah. See, I'm not as dumb as you guys think I am. Oh See? yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> uh but uh, that that should be to me. I feel like this should be a good fight. Now I do know that Ricky that Umar had called out Ricky Simone. Yes, because there was a little bit of back and forth. I think. Um, oh yeah, stuff. a lot of back I mean, and forth. Yeah, and so this fight though, this fight makes sense though to me, John. It does. Um, and Marab is now taken, so we're not going to see Umar fight him. But I know that Umar has been on Twitter trying to ask these guys for fights. I can tell you and can verify right now that people are not trying to fight him. Nobody's well, it, he's running into the Islam effect and the Habib effect. No one wants to fight him until he gets to the title. Then all of a sudden, that. or until they're, until they're ranked ahead of them. 
yeah well as, as soon as as soon as he's ranked ahead it's like i'll take the chance yeah that's how you get that's how you move yourself but yeah he's got the Nurmagomedov effect he's got that mm. name and yeah. right now that name bears a lot of weight in the sport of mma well let me ask you this then where do you go when because Islam, it is almost a little bit of a product of this. Is when fighters won't fight you, the ranked fighters won't fight you, but yet yeah. you should be allowed to keep moving up in the rankings because people will not fight you. That's the way that I feel, and I'm not saying that just because I am a homer for my boys. Everyone knows that. People that listen to me, they know I'm a Habib fan. They know I'm a Islam fan. I'm a Umar fan, Usman fan. All these fans, I'm a fan of all the boys that I train with. But the reality is, is that you shouldn't be punished because fighters won't fight you. You should be able to move up in the rankings. I almost so feel like when fighters when fighters turn you, you down, you should I not be punished spot. for being so good. <laughs> yeah, you shouldn't be punished for being good. No, and I almost I almost feel like when you get I almost feel like if you get turned down, unless you have a a, a doctor's note, <laughs> unless you have a doctor's note, I should pretty much just take your spot if you don't want to fight me. No. I mean, I mean, maybe not that high. Let's say, say I want to fight Marab. You know, Umar wants to fight Marab, but Marab's ranked number three or two or whatever he is. See, that's the problem. That's the problem. You can't go from number fourteen you're, or number you're twelve. You're sitting there saying, okay, is. well, yeah. that's not why. Fair. Why would Marab want to yeah, fight? That's true. You know, Umar right now, it's like, eh, you know, hey, that's a tough fight, and give me somebody. But the problem with Marab is, you know, the Peter Yan fight is perfect. I'm not that's saying perfect. anything. I'm not. Yeah, that's a but perfect fight. The problem with Marab is he's not trying to fight to get to the title. No, that's crazy. Yeah, he's just trying to that's fight. A little nuts to me. Yeah, but. yeah, that's a little nuts to me. Um, you know what's funny, John, is that we just now that I just said that, I had to hear myself say it out loud, and it didn't make sense. So <laughs> <laughs> when I said that person should just take their spot, I was like, yeah, wait a second, no, that doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't. That doesn't make sense. I mean, but look, if you guys are like say number ten, it's okay. Number, it was a thought. Yeah, but number ten and number eight. Yeah, but you know, you know what. A lot of my thoughts should just remain in thoughts. They shouldn't yeah, they actually should come out of my mouth. In your head, not coming out. <laughs> they shouldn't actually come out of my mouth. But <laughs> what I was saying is that if you're ranked number 10 and you're and the person is ranked ahead of you, say like they're number seven or eight, that's where I start having some problems. What do you mean you're not going to fight the number 10 guy? They're still right there. Yeah. I understand like the Marab situation where Umar's like I think number 10 or 11 or something like that. I get that part. Um because I was I was a product of that when I was ranked number two or three with the UFC the last time, they called me up and they're like, yeah, after the the pet the title fight fell off, they wanted me to fight um, Ruslam. Uh, what was his last name? Oh, Kabbalah. Ruslam. Kabbalah. And I was like, he was ranked. I don't even know if he was ranked number fifteen, but he was ranked really high. He's I don't fighting, know if he's fighting um, in March. He, he fights for us, right? He fights for yeah, Bellator now. Fight. Well, he's never happened. Has. Yeah, he's yeah, had, yeah. He fights. Had visa problems. Has yeah. You know, all kinds of things, but he's finally fighting in March. Yeah, a lot of the Russians are having visa problems. And not only just the Russians, I heard a lot of the UK, people from the UK are having some problems right now, too. Really? So, yeah, because uh, Louise, Mickey, our ring girl, yeah. she's having a hard time getting her visa right now just to come to the States. She's from she's coming from Thailand. She's been training at uh, AK. So, with uh, out there with Mike Swick and uh, his crew. So, God bless Mike Swick. How's he, how's he feeling? He's doing you know? good. He just got done with his last uh, bit of chemo. chemo. Feels, doctors are telling him that it looks like pretty much it's down to nothing, if anything at all. So um, he's doing good. He's relaxing right now. He just finished his last thing of chemo. I just talked to him this morning. He finished his last thing of chemo yesterday, and now today he is enjoying some some nice food, some nice healthy food. He's going to get back on the ocean, do some free diving, and uh, you know, enjoy some time with his, uh, with his I don't want to say wife, but uh, it's close girl yeah it's close it's his girl it's close his girl and uh no, yeah no matter he, what good, good for mike i'm glad he's doing good prayers yeah. are always going towards him man yeah he's been he's been uh he's been chomping at me man he's getting mad at me because we haven't invited him on yet so we just got to get him lined up because of the timing it's the timing of the time change so we'd have to film at like our normal time 4 a.m so <laughs> <laughs> we have right. to figure yeah. out we have to figure out some time to get him on because you know Absolutely. he's had me on his show and and he really wants to come on. He's been talking to me about it. So Love and he's to. been bugging me about going out there to train. I'm like, man, I got to get my hand fixed first. My hand's super fucked up right now. Um, all right, Dave, what else you got for us, buddy? Last UFC fight. The last UFC fight. Chris yeah, Gutierrez. This, this is a good one when you look at this. Chris Gutierrez, dynamite, stand-up against Pedro Munoz, a guy who likes to use the stand-up. He's got a you know background in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. He's got the full game. He's tough as hell. He, you do not get rid of him, and that's the real question here. Can Chris Gutierrez be the guy that ends that streak and gets rid of Pedro Munoz? I don't know if it can be done, but this is a great matchup. 
Paige was a dog, man. He's oh, just fine. He finds ways to to put the pressure on you, to touch you with his hands. But the one thing about him is he kind of gets sucked into just making it a boxing match. Yep. Utilize your kicks more, man. You use them and then you get away from you. You use them and you get away from him. He's got some nasty leg kicks. He's good with his leg kicks and he's great Absolutely. with his boxing. When he puts the two things together, he, he's almost an untouchable fighter because he's good on the ground as well. He just doesn't, doesn't never really goes there. But Pedro is a well-rounded fighter, that veteran mentality that he can just come in and just use the techniques that he has, his skill level, as at the highest level. I just want to see him put it all together. He gets away from it, and he kind of does a little bit of that Gray Maynard where he fell in love with his boxing. Just oh, fell yeah. in love with it. There's and no you doubt. See, you see it a lot with with older like um, jiu-jitsu guys or older wrestlers. They you just start why. relying strictly on their boxing. And you know it's, why? It's painful, man. It's, it's a lot of work. To wrestle and to train and grappling to, to do is grappling. Exhausting. It's exhausting, especially when you're doing it against someone yeah. else who's good. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. But you know what, though, I'm, I'm a product of that. My last fight with Patricky, I should have just tried to take him down. Yeah, I don't know, stupid ass. No. No, <laughs> uh, but luckily, luckily, I had a, a friend that was in the cage with me. Is the ref? He just uh, he just took helped me out a little bit. Took care of it for took me. Care so. Of you. Gotcha. He said, you know yeah, what? Gotcha. Just going to let this headbutt live and just move on. <laughs> but Chris Gutierrez is good. You do so well at recovering from a headbutt so fast. Yeah, that I know. That right. Get just back to your feet. Fucking Andy Foster. <laughs> son of a gun. <laughs> Don't think I forgot that, Andy. Yeah. Don't think I forgot. I got you, Andy. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Right. I know it's your fault my shit didn't get overturned, buddy. I know. <laughs> no, hey, those commissioners talk to me. They tell me everything. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, buddy. Um, but what do you think? Chris Gutierrez got a good chance. I think Chris has got a very good chance. Chris's stand-up is very, very technically sound. He's fast. I think he's faster than Pedro. And I think if Pedro does exactly what you say, mm -hmm. if he tries to get into the boxing match with Gutierrez, that's not a good place for him to be. He needs to no. be the complete mixed martial artist, get into crushing the space, using his hands to get inside, make it dirty, dirty box, get it to the ground at times, Make it to where Chris is not comfortable with where the fight is taking place. And that's Pedro's way of getting the win. Yeah. Pedro needs to make sure that I, I, even if he does fall into that boxing mentality that when I saw in the Frankie Edgar fight is that he waited and waited and waited. He was just trying to land one punch, one punch, one, two punch. He's got to let combinations go. Chris Gutierrez is going to be in, out, moving around a lot more than Frankie Edgar was when they fought. He's got to make sure he's stalking after him. But just leading them into into his shots, almost like a Nate Diaz. Nate Diaz does that really well. He kind of like paws you with the left ter the right hand because he's southpaw. He'll yeah. paw you with the right hand right into his straight left. He's not. That's why the slap thing is so effective. Oh, he's yeah. just trying to slap you Brings in the you face, or he's way. just trying to bring you back over, trying to get you to change directions right into his straight left. Yep. Pedro's got to make sure that he's just he has a lot more output. That's the problem right now is those fighters that end up. In that boxing realm, like the, like Gray Maynard or any of like Phil Baroni, their output isn't a lot. They're just looking to land the one shot. Big They're looking to land the two shots, the right big group. shots. You've got to have boxing set up, rip the body, come back up to the head, mix in a kick here and there. If he can do that, if he can have more output, I think he's got a good chance of beating Chris Gutierrez. We're going to find out. Yeah, yeah. Next, Dave. What's up? Ooh. Oh, my man, Luke Rock. I guess, no, it's not my man. It's your man. He's my Luke man. Rockhold asked for a release from the UFC. They granted him that release. Now, that was just after he said he retired. Yeah. What's that? It was just kind of strange to me because I didn't think that they no, would I let think him it's go. Right. And good for the UFC it for is. doing it. It's the right thing to do. They were done with him as far as, you know, look, yeah. they gave him, you know, Paulo Costa in that last fight. I loved the fight, actually, as far as the drama of the fight. I thought, you yeah. know, obviously, Paulo Costa was, you know, definitely ahead in that fight. When it, the, the post fight where they not only interviewed Paulo, they interviewed Luke and what he said, I think for one time, one time that I've ever watched Luke been around Luke, he got the people on his side. He got the crowd on his side. He made people understand that man, how much this meant to him and you know how he was feeling. And I loved it. And they gave him his release. That means that he can go wherever he wants. He says he wants to fight. He says he's feeling good. Do you really think it's a good thing for him to continue to fight? I think that there's options on the table that he can make a lot of money. 
I could see him, I'm being honest, and, and whether I think it's a good fight for him or not, I could see, because he lives in Costa Mesa, I could see the potential of him in a Jake Paul fight. I could see that fight. I could see him in a, in a Logan, in a Logan Paul fight. I could see that fight happening. I would say he'd have a better chance of beating Logan than Jake, because Jake's taking this real serious, but I could see that fight happening. Um, and also too, Logan, Logan and him are about the same size. Jake's a little bit smaller, but Jake's the better boxer. Um, mm-hmm. uh, but give Luke some time, give Luke time on working just strictly his boxing without having to worry about the wrestling, the kicking, all of those things. But his greatest attribute is I was going to say, those are his best attributes. I and so don't worry that. about those. I understand that. Um, uh, but he likes to box. He likes to work with, um, Perillo. He likes to work with Camacho and the guys in his strength and conditioning. Those are all guys that have worked with Gennady Golovkin and, and other top, uh, other top boxers. So he gets into that realm of working and training with those guys. That's kind of where I think he's leading to. Now I did, I know I do know he's coming to the Bellator event, um, on CBS next week at the forum. I know he'll be there. He reached out to me, asked me if I was going to be there. And I said, yeah. And so he said, I'll be there. So make sure you come down or can I come up and say hi? And I was like, absolutely. Uh, he's going to be, um, he'll be sitting there front row. There's a lot. The reason why he wanted to go, he's like, I want to see how good Johnny Eblen is. So I, I don't know what that means. I don't know if there's talk and conversation. I don't know what any of that means, but he just said he wants to see how good the champ is, Johnny Eblen. He's like, all I've heard is good things. Kid's good. He's like, and I know he's fighting someone tough, so I want to I want to be there in person to see how good these guys are. And I'm like, all right. So we'll see. I mean, who knows? He may want to come over. He may not. I, I don't know. He hasn't told me that yet. And all I yeah. said is he just he's interested to see what the talent level is in person, which is good, which makes for fun conversation. Sure, absolutely it does. But it comes back to that old saying of be careful what you wish for. The guy that I want to see him fight the most, man, just to be honest, I don't care if he fights the young and upper colors, I want to see him fight Gegard Mousasi. I would love that. That's the fight. I agree. That's the fight to see. I'm not but, worried about the championship fight. I would love to see Gegard and Luke. It would yep. be a fun fight. It would be really... Absolutely. You know, they match up so well. Their strengths are the same. It would be uh, interesting. Interesting mm-hmm. as hell. Yeah. But we'll Dave, see. Can you, Who knows? can you pull up the Bellator 85 uh, pound bracket or the division? Yeah, if I'm looking at this in the 85 pound, right? Uh, you know, him and Salter, him and Dalton Rasta. I mean, that's, you know, Dalton Rasta's a young up and comer. Um, Lorenz Larkin and him would be a fun fight just because they're both, you know, stand up guys. Lorenz's a little bit small for him, to be honest. Eh, no, Look, Lorenz fought it. You know, I understand what you're saying is frame wise. Mm-hmm. Luke has got a, a a bigger frame. Yeah, Lorenz has fought at light heavyweight. He's fought at yeah. middleweight. He's fought at welterweight. Lorenz can his speed is a problem for people, and it's a matter of you know that's a fight where I look and say who fights the smart fight. Yeah. What about Fabian Edwards? Rank number two right now. Ah, I'll tell you. I see that to me is a fight again. You got to fight the right fight. You got to fight the mm-hmm. smart fight. But Fabian Edwards against Luke. I'm telling you what, if Luke fights a smart fight, it's going to be a tough fight for Fabian Edwards. Mm -hmm. But they match up well. Fabian's got great stand-up. He's got dynamic kicks, same as Luke. His wrestling is his weakest area, which he's gotten better at. He thought he was, you know, he was at at that level. He could stop anyone. He realized after, you know, guys like uh, Vanderford was able to take him down at basically in the end at will. Mm -hmm. Maybe your maybe your wrestling is not at the level you were putting it at, and you've got to improve. Yeah, I mean, there's some fights in there that I'm interested in seeing him do. You know, and I think if he did sign with Bellator, there's still an option for him to box. Uh, yeah. I, I think that'll be still out there. I think they're they'll be 100 percent okay with it. Um, but the Jake Paul thing being with the with the PFL now, I don't know how how real his boxing category now is going to be. Is he going to continue to push the boxing, or is he going to well, work got more the, the MMA Fury fights supposedly? Yeah, apparently he does have that from what I understand. That's in February, right? <clears throat> yeah, I think they already announced it again. Is that February 20? <laughs> mm. I don't know. I want to say 25th, remember. but could be wrong. Anyways, we'll see. We'll see who wins that fight. We'll see. Um, But back to Luke Rockwell. I think there's fights there, but the Gegard fight for sure interests me. The Fabian Edwards fight interests me. Maybe down into the Aaron Jeffries and then the Anthony Adams. Those ones interest me in Lorenz Larkin. He won't fight Romero with their training partners. Yeah. Uh, you know, but there's some fights in there that, that, that do that do interest me, though. What you got there, Dave? You want to see John's face? Is that why you're looking around? Huh? I just checking something. 
What are you checking, buddy? Swing over there, baby. I'm watching you. No matter what, you, you're go. right. You're Dave. Let me just let me just tell you, I am still this good looking. Yep, I knew it. Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. What else you got for us, buddy? Have you ever heard of the seven deadly sins? Have you ever heard of those? No, because I'm still alive. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That vanity, it's a Oh, jeez, jeez. <laughs> All, All right. right. This is one interesting. One of my favorite fighters. You've got Costello Van Stinas in Paris against Douglas Lima. Lima going up to middleweight. He had one middleweight bout against Van Stinas' <clears throat> training partner and the ex-champion in Gegard Mousasi, former champion, I want to say. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you what, this is a this is a really good matchup because both guys like to keep it on their feet. Both guys like the stand-up game. Van Stinas is actually a little bit more willing to try to take it to the ground, I believe, than Douglas is. But really, this is a this is a, a make or break, in, in my opinion, for Douglas Lima and his career of being, you know, a top considered a top guy because but he's going against a guy in Van Stinas that both of you and I we know this this dude's a you talk about we talk yeah. about mean fighters <clears throat> Costello Van Steen has got a mean streak in him I love that about him he reminds like you used to tell me stories about Carlos Condit like oh. the nicest guy outside the cage like super friendly always kind of like you know I did I did some EA sports stuff with him when I was with the UFC up in Vancouver Canada and he was a fantastic guy Carlos oh. Condit Van Steenis but in the cage, he was a killer, Carlos Conn. Just that mean streak, just yep. nasty. Van Stina's very nice, very soft spoken, um, very humble attitude. when you talk to him. But you get him in the cage, and he's just like, "I'm taking your fucking head off. I'm oh, winning this fight." Yeah. And I love that about him. And he just kind of, I don't know. I think he's a good looking kid, but he's got like this scar on his face. Just reminds me of like a villain in a movie. And it just, I don't know what it is, man, but something about him, I, I love well, watching him What, fight. what we're love... looking at, it makes him look almost like Frankenstein. This is not yeah. a good picture of him. He's yeah. actually, you're right, he's a good-looking guy, but he does have that scar. Yeah. But, man, it's, yeah, he's, it's, you know, stone-cold killer. Yeah, he is. And so, but I agree, I agree with you that with Douglas Lima, this is like a crossroads for him. Yep. He, the 170 is just too much for him to make now. Like, he hasn't had success there. You look at the guys that are too in much that. Weight. And you look at the guys that are in that division, they're all guys that he can't beat right now because of the wrestling. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he had success against Korshkov, you know, with stuff wrestling. And then in their third fight, correct? Uh, he made him work enough to where he got him tired, was able to get to his back and choke him. Yep. But as you get older, those type of things start to fade away. The ability to, to work hard, to stuff the takedowns, to, to fight him off as long as you could when you were younger. And plus, he had already done everything he needed to do in that weight class, John. A little bit of that motivation. Then when he won the tournament against Roy McDonald, won the yeah, million that was, dollars. That was a turning as point. As, as soon as he won that million dollars, I just saw the turning point. Yeah. The, just the the way he talked in interviews, the way he performed in the cage, the way he waited for things. It just it was almost like that sense of comfort. I'm good. I made I made my mark. I've won the tournament. I've won a, a million dollars plus my pay, which he's making a lot of money, by the way. Um. He just, which he we deserves. yeah, which he does. Absolutely. He's one of the pillars. I still look at it. It's Patricio and there's him. Yeah. Those are the two guys that kind of helped Bellator stay afloat up until this new generation of, of fighters that Scott Coker brought in the Van Steenises, the Fabian Edwards, the, the fighters that brought the Coker helped Johnny Eblins that the Coker brought in to yeah. start making some waves that the older generation, the beginning generation is starting to kind of make their way out or not out, but they're still at the top. They're just kind of floating around right now. And so they're having some issues, um, you know, fighting these young guys, these young, talented guys. So this is going to be one of those those telltale fights. He's now at 85. Van Stinas is a big guy. He's tall. He's, he fights hard. He's aggressive. He doesn't give you big, a moment. He's going to be bigger than, than uh, Lima. Than Lima. But we yeah, always talk about crazy. how big Lima is in the cage. Van Stinas is going to be the bigger fighter here. But that's where that jump is, though, John. That jump from from 70 to 85 is so big. Yep. I, that's why I've always felt there should be every 10 pounds up until you hit 85 and then go there to is. 205. There is. Yeah, People just, just don't use one. it. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> uh, but this this should be a fun fight. It just all really depends on which Douglas Lima we see. Yep. Do we see the one that pulls the trigger? Do we see the one that's that will go ahead and throw? That's the one. I want to see that's that one. That's the difference. That's and exactly then, 
if you're looking at this, Josh, it's all about mm -hmm. does Douglas Lima throw punches? Does mm -hmm. he use that kick? Does he do it in combinations? And does he go back to it time after time and not hesitate and wait? Yeah, that's that's the other. I, I just was recalling the kick and I'm thinking to myself, if he gets started with that early and often. It could change the way that Vancinas fights this fight because sure. I feel like the way that Vancinas wants to fight this fight is he wants to press Lima to the fence, knee him, elbow him, hang on him, make him carry the weight, really try to slow him down because we've seen in the past when Douglas Lima is pressed to the fence or when he has to wrestle a lot more in the clinch, he's not the same fighter after that. He slows down quite a bit. His output is less. If, if, if Vancinas can do that, then that'll change that'll that'll change the way this fight goes. And if Lima gets started early and often with those low level calf kicks to change the way Vancinas is able to press into the fence and fight him, that could change the way uh Vancinas has to fight. So well, Lima you, could end up getting that. You way. also have to think about the fact that Vancinas' teammate <clears throat> in Gegard Musasi faced mm -hmm. Douglas Lima. He suffered based upon those low leg kicks. Yeah. He had to be wheeled out, if you recall, after the uh the fight, you know, in the back, he's sitting in a wheelchair because his leg was shot. Mm -hmm. And so Gegard's going to have some good information for Van Stienis about the way to approach the fight with Douglas. And, you know, if you're looking at everything, Douglas on the ground, you know, in the top position, he does good work. Underneath, he's not that big submission threat. No. No, he actually just concedes the position and just yep. kind of just... And it's lo he's lost his titles to... because of it. Yep. Uh, next... <clears throat> Moldovsky, Valentin Moldovsky against Linton Vassell, heavyweight bout. This has been, oh, this is a rematch because this mm -hmm. fight took place. I remember doing this in Thackerville, Oklahoma. Oh, yeah, baby. For remember. whatever reason, Moldovsky seemed to always be in Thackerville, Oklahoma. <laughs> I was like, this guy, poor, poor Russian from Starry School, comes to the U.S. and they keep on putting him in Thackerville, Oklahoma, which... If that's the only place you've ever seen, you go, oh, America's not that much. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be going there a lot this year, I think two or three times, buddy. Well, yeah. And this you is, enjoy. well, the, the real thing about this fight is, look, Moldovsky won the first one. And he won it based upon being the faster and better conditioned athlete because Vassell came from light heavyweight, went to heavyweight, and put on too much weight. Mm. For this was the first fight there, put on so much weight, and he thought about, you know, oh, I want to be bigger, that he got tired. And you get tired in a fight, you know, it makes a difference. Linton knows exactly what weight he wants to come in at now. He's been doing it, and he's been doing it for the last, you know, three fights in a row. He's looked fantastic. And so this is going to be a really good rematch. This is not going to possibly go the same way that the first one went. Yeah, Lynn Vassell is starting to believe in himself. You see the confidence is growing, the guys that he's been able to beat in the heavyweight division, just the way that he's able to fight now. He understands, like, look, I don't have to worry about cutting the weight, keep my weight under control in terms of just eat healthy, keep training, work on my conditioning and my cardio. When I talked to him in Sioux Falls at the last Sioux Falls event for Bellator, you could just, just by talking to him, he felt so much more confident at the heavyweight division because – there's not all that stress of getting your weight down the whole camp. You're actually working on getting better and not just working on, gosh, my million and just feeding getting your body. smaller and feeding your body. Yeah, good nutrition. And he's he's built like a Greek god. This guy, man, small, tiny ass waist and these big ass shoulders and back. And I'm just like, gosh. I was watching him do pull ups at the um, in Sioux Falls, and I'm like, you can just see like all the his back just ripped all the way down. I'm like, man, <laughs> I used to be an athlete like that too, but no. <laughs> Used not to. really, I not used really, to. not like that. Jesus, man, I never had that much muscle in my life. <laughs> uh, but Moldovsky, I, I look at both these guys. Not so much Lynn Vassell because he, he is a, he is still a big heavyweight, uh, but he still keeps his weight down around two thirty eight, two forty, somewhere yeah, two forty, somewhere around there. there. Yeah. yeah. Whereas Moldovsky walks around two twenty two, two twenty eight, two twenty five, somewhere in there, I believe. Yep. Yeah. And so. They're, they're kind of this new bred of heavyweights that we talked about so many times. They're hybrids. They come in smaller, but they've got a better pace and a lot of them can wrestle. Like, yeah. Lynn Vassell can wrestle. Lynn Vassell's yes, got good, got great jujitsu. Uh, Moldovsky can wrestle. Doesn't utilize it as much as he should, but he can wrestle. And he, and he likes to stand. He likes to trade. He likes to get into some exchanges. He likes to do all those things. So this, this should make for a really fun fight. And I didn't see the first fight. 
So you're saying Linton got tired and just kind of slowed down because yeah. he'd put on too much weight. Yep. I expect to, I agree with you. I expect to see a way different fight from that because Lynn Vassell, one thing he has been working on a lot is his conditioning to make sure that he can feed all those muscles with oxygen. Yep. So, and like, if Lynn Vassell gets on top of you, you ain't getting away. The dude yeah. is very good from the top position. Yeah. Does good. damage, moves, progresses, outstanding. So we're going to see. Yeah. Next, let's go. Come on. We oh. got Leandro. This, there's a little bit behind this, and we put this on mm. here because Leandro Higo coming from Brazil and the Pitbull Brothers against James Gallagher, who represents, well, I don't know if he, well, he, he can't be fighting out of glory now. So he's back. No, I think he's back in Ireland. SBG. Yeah. So he's back with John Kavanaugh. There's always been a battle kind of between the, the SBG group and the, and the Pitbull Brothers group. But this is a really good bantamweight bout. Interesting contrast of style. You know, we know that Ego's got good ground. We know that James Gallagher's got good ground. It's really a question of who's going to be able to get the best positions. We're going to find out um, how much effect on James Gallagher than not having James Cross working with him. Yeah. He was he 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 was feeling very said, confident with him. Yes, he said he was feeling very uh, comfortable with him in his corner. He's feeling really comfortable with him coaching him. He loved everything that was going on there. I was like, you better love it if you're moving your ass to fucking Kansas. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> you better love it. <laughs> he was in Missouri. I mean, Missouri. Same shit. Kansas City, Missouri. <laughs> Same shit, John. <laughs> Not to see, for a I'm a Kansas City a Chiefs, Chiefs fan. fan. I know, and you don't even understand that Kansas City actually is like right in the I middle. Get, I know. Part it of it's is. in Kansas. Well, no, it's in Kansas. It's in Missouri. There's Kansas, and it's right there. I understand, but no thanks. No thanks. <laughs> I've been out there a couple of times to corner some people for Titan fights, and there was another yeah. one called Shark Fights, I think, or something like that, or I can't remember what it was called. But I remember I went out there to corner Phil Baroni and Titan Fights. <clears throat> and... uh Man, it was cold. It was grimy. It was, but hey, good I'm steakhouses. A, but I'm a Chiefs fan, so that's they all. Got that good matters. steakhouses, baby. Uh, do they really? Oh yeah, they do. Okay, okay. I'm gonna have to check it out next time I go. <clears throat> um, but look, this this should be a fun fight. The fact the two of these guys are gonna talk some trash. They're gonna get in there. They're, hopefully, the fight delivers. It's really gonna come down to that. March 10th here in San Jose, so that should be a good fight. I get. I don't have to leave. I can sleep in my own bed. Just roll up, show up, do my thing. So that'd be good. good Should be you. Fun. All right, next. Oh, ah. we got Carrie Melendez in a flyweight bout against Bruna Ellen, who is fun to watch. Good stand up by both fighters. This is going to be in San Jose. <clears throat> this is at flyweight, 125 pounds. So, you know, when you look at Carrie, Carrie is very slight in build, but she's tall. She she, she packs power. It's the she one thing. But, but the thing, and Bruna is not, she doesn't have the same length as Carrie. She's much shorter, but she is a, an aggressive fighter. Comes forward. This is going to take place on the feet, and this is going to be two uh, two ladies just throwing big blows at each other. Yeah, Carrie Melendez. I've known her since she was probably I don't know eighteen, nineteen, twenty years old. She used to fight. She was a fantastic Muay Thai kickboxer. Had more of that like traditional style Muay Thai with the palms mm -hmm. forward, just kind of a little bit of a bounce in her step. She had a beautiful front kick. Um, big power in her hands. She was really good at throwing elbows. Also, she was just a, a really grimy, dirty fighter. Not dirty, I shouldn't say, but just a grimy fighter. Someone that could beat you on the outside and someone that could beat you on the inside when you guys got into the clinch. She was good with the foot sweeps, all of those things. She obviously lacks the grappling, but she has been getting better. Yeah, she, so any, anymore, she's she pretty been damn better. good. Yeah, she's getting, she's getting better. Um, the thing with her, like you said, John, she's she does pack a pretty nasty punch. She does. It's really she's amazing. got some power in that right hand. She's kind of adopted her husband's style of, of MMA stance. She had the wider stance. She kind of like crouches down to avoid the takedowns. And she kind of bounces up and down a little bit and she sets up her right hand. She kind of paws the jab to kind of push you into her right hand, kind of like the Diaz brothers. Yeah. She does that a little bit. And Gilbert used to do that too. She kind of just paw you a little bit with the jab All the time. and then feed you right into his right hand because he was very right hand heavy. Um, this fight though is going to be one of those where Bruna Ellen's got to stick and move and get out without getting hit. She's going to try to use the pace. She's going to have to use the bot, the body kicks, and she's going to have to 
get in and get out. Throw your one and two and then circle out. Don't back straight up because you're going to get caught with that right hand. Yeah, not this an easy a, thing to do. This is a fun fight. I want to I wanna know how much the speed plays a difference in this fight because Carrie's a little bit older. I think she's 38, 39 now. Oh, she's not so that old, is she? Yeah, I think she is, John. Um, really? I would have thought, I thought 34. Up? Carrie Melendez. I think she's 30, she's 38, I think. She might be pushing 39. Man, she's going to be pissed off at you. 38. 38. Right, man. Yeah. No, no. I've known her for a long time, John. I know, I know. Since she was a baby, pretty much. I swear to God, I, I mean, thought she was 30, 34. I knew her. Shit, I knew her before she was ever even talking to Gilbert. Because she used to fight at the Civic Auditorium. Um, You know, and she trained with uh, with uh, the Wooden Man. Um. Gosh, can't remember his name off the top of my head. Um, man. Uh, you lost me yeah, on that one. Yeah, he's a Muay Thai. He's from Thailand. Uh, they called him the Wooden Man. Uh, gosh, what was his name? Wing Chun? No. No, no, no. <laughs> Wing Chun? <laughs> no, no, I got it. Yeah, just Muay, uh, just nice, probably, I would just type nice in Nice try wooden, on that one, Dave. I like that one. The yeah, Wing Chun was, dummy. They call him the Wooden Man Muay Thai. <laughs> what was his name? Anyways. Uh, anyways. God, he's like a, he he owned the he was part owner of the Fairtex or he was the head trainer at the Fairtex gym. Opened up his own. So God, God, I can't remember his name. It drives me crazy now. Um, but anyways, he trained with her, or she trained with him, I should say. It, no, 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 it's all right. Who who is it? Yeah, Jong Sunong. <clears throat> That's who he was. So he was real. He was real good. Fantastic coach. Fantastic. Everyone loved him. Super nice guy. Very friendly. Um. <clears throat> But they, uh, but she, she, she was young. She was like probably 20, 21, somewhere around there. Just started fighting. Fantastic fighter. Really good Muay Thai specialist. The speed, I think, is going to be a little bit of an issue. I think Bruna Ellen's going to be the faster fighter. She's going to be able to come in and blitz a little be. bit. She's going to come in and blitz a little bit. Carrie's going to be more conservative, kind of like set the pace, try to get her to shy away from her power. Yeah. So she can do that. So we'll see. <clears throat> but it makes for a fun fight. Does. It's San Jose, man. So she's good. She she's Perfect a big draw board. here. Yeah, exactly. Yep, she's a big draw here. All right, next. Next. Oh, uh, we've got. I'm kind of happy about this. Another one. We're talking about Leah McCourt versus Kat Zingano. This is not the fight that I thought Kat Zingano would be getting next in her Bellator career, but she gets Leah McCourt. And you look mm. in both of them. You know, judo versus wrestling. It's, that's where the strengths come from. Leah McCord has really come a long way in her stand-up. She, when she uses her jab, she's really effective. Mm -hmm. You know, not super fast, but Kat's not super fast anyways either. But she is really good with her wrestling. Kat's wrestling yeah. is really stellar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not the fight that I was expecting. But then again, I know that this division's kind of a little bit on hold right now, trying to figure out what's going on with the champ. Well, and... You know, so I think this fight, this is kind of the next best thing. I would have maybe have seen uh, Sinead Kavanaugh, but I mean, I don't know how her knee's doing. She's back, um, back able to fully train. No, back she's back training. I know she's. Yeah, back. I would imagine, but I mean, like back to able, like to be able to do it yeah. in the fight mode. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, I mean, like, look, this this should be a fun fight. Where is this going to be at? March thirty first, Temecula. Temecula. Kind of makes sense because. Uh, Cats from that, that San Diego area. She's now. that San Diego area now, right? Vista, yeah. yeah, yeah. Good for her. Good for her. So yep. good for her. All right, next. All right, we'll wrap up on this story and regarding the slap fighting. Just for a Oh movie. Jesus! Do I have to talk about that crap? We're gonna wrap up the slap fighting. All right, here we go. <laughs> Jesus. All right. All right. Let's talk about it. Look, the, the UFC is following the pattern that they said they started when they started the UFC. What do you mean the Dana UFC? White, what are you talking about the UFC? The Dana it White do with the UFC. Yes, it does. Has it? No, it doesn't. The UFC. Don't try to disconnect them from each other, John. Why? Same owners. I want to disconnect thing, them. This as contract much as possible. This contract is exactly the same. Two and two is what these fighters are making. Or not fighters. Fighters? Is what these slappers are making. Slappers. There you go. I, I like that. I, I just yeah. came up with a good one. These slappers. 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 You did. <laughs> I'm going to give you credit when like they the come up. Yep. Uh, up stands the slapper. Man. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what to say. Um, two and two is is ridiculous. Without being able to defend your face, without being able to defend your chin, and you have a stick behind your back you have to hold. No, and then the people that are catching them when they fall, they're not even doing a very good job. <laughs> so, I don't know. I, I haven't watched. I'm potentially getting knocked I, out I saw twice. Highlights on, on that's like, what I'm uh, saying. Instagram. I see, 
Exactly. That's what I'm saying. They're not really getting caught either. They're just kind of hitting the ground and they're catching their head. Are their heads hitting? I don't know. Nah, they're catching okay. their heads with their they're hands kind of, right. but their forearms and sometimes their knees. Uh, <laughs> two and two, John. That's not, I mean, if you're, if you're entering these slap fight things, you've got worse CTE than me and I've been fighting for 22 years. <laughs> like, this is, this is not smart. Look, I, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to say it the way I, I view it and look at it. I think it's stupid, first off. Yeah. I think this is a fad. I think that if you take a look at the numbers that were uh, on TBS following an AEW, because what, what Dana ended up doing with this you know, power slap mm -hmm. is yeah. he, put it, he did the same thing that the Ultimate Fighter followed Raw professional wrestling because professional yep. wrestling brings a lot of numbers aew is doing good numbers you know they're up in the you know over a million views easy yep. and when you see that power slap did a number of two two hundred ninety five thousand on their first show following an aew mm, that ain't too good that, 295 or 225 i thought it was 225 okay. it was almost 300 295 okay. and you look and you say well you know first off I said it before and I'll say it again. Anybody that is making money off of this, as far as you know, you're the one you're promoting it or anything. Shame on you! Shame on you that you are you're basically promoting traumatic brain injury because there is a huge difference between MMA, boxing, and slap fighting, mm -hmm. and the real difference is. It is important and part of the sport to know how to defend yourself in boxing and MMA. Mm -hmm. Defense is everything. If you don't have defense, you're going to get put out quickly. <clears throat> so you've got to learn how to defend. In this, you know, Josh, the first thing I would say to you, if you are fighting, and I, I have said it to you, protect yourself at all times. Do we not hear that both in MMA yeah. and in boxing? Yeah. Absolutely. In this, I would have to look at you and say, Protect yourself at no time. It is not allowed. It's part of the rules. You can't do it. Yeah. It's the stupidest fucking thing there is. Which is crazy that the, the commissions are allowing this. The athletic commissions are allowing this. This just goes to show you, and I'm going to get blasted here, the strength of the UFC in the state of Nevada. Because you don't see it right now in any other states because they're all now looking at it like, going, uh-oh. Yeah. It is the UFC... Put it there, and because they're so implanted and so important to the state of Nevada as far as the Athletic Commission, the Athletic Commission is self-funding. Who does more fights in Nevada than anybody? The UFC by far, especially now with all the Apex fights and everything they're doing. That is how the Nevada State Athletic Commission funds itself. Now we come to you with this, and we're saying, oh, it's good, it's good, it's good, it's good. It's hard for you to say no. Now, is it the right thing to say no? It is absolutely the right thing, and it's what should have been done. Sometimes that right road is a tough road to take, but you should take it. Yeah, if you guys still don't believe what John's saying or you still are having a hard time understanding what he's saying, is it comes down to when we talked about Tyson Fury and Bobby Green earlier, about fighters that can roll with the punches and not absorb the full punch. That's the This is the exact opposite of that. You have no chance to move your face. You have no chance to shrug your shoulder. You have no chance of pulling in and pulling out. Going with the shot. Don't, yeah, don't don't take that those words out of my mouth too well. <laughs> <laughs> you have no opportunity to really obstruct the shot. You or, are not or allowed to defend yourself in it's any crazy. fashion. It's crazy. Yep. So when All people you're are like, oh, about... yeah, fighters get paid this to do this. And fighters, get, yeah, but we were able to actually put our hands up and yeah. block punches and move and move our head and move our body to not absorb the full power. And, this is not the case. And you can see that the the slappers, there you go. The slappers, the slappers are going to make a fortune at $2,000 to show and $2,000 <clears throat> to win. Yeah, yeah you, you know, this is exactly... Let's see. Is four thousand dollars worth traumatic brain injury? If you're poor right now, you may think, "Yeah, it is." As your life goes on, you're not. You're I want. Not I think it is. Here's the thing, John. I want to go back to my very first UFC fight ever against Gerald Strubent. I don't think I took one punch in that fight. You didn't. 
and I made two and two. You did yeah. that fight. Yeah. I don't think I took one punch in that fight. You didn't. I'm just and telling I made you. Two I remember two. that fight I very well. I took less damage in my U my UFC debut than these guys are making getting slapped in the fucking face and knocked the fuck out. That's right. That's crazy, man. That's that crazy. crazy. All right, Dave, is there anything else? Nope. Nope. That's it. All right, well, hey, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Hit that little thumbs up. The new algorithm saying that we have to hit thumbs up. So you guys, please hit that thumbs up. Hit the bell so when our shows drop, you guys get notifications. That'll let you guys know when we drop them. Sometimes we drop them at all different hours. And uh, we want to make sure we keep you guys informed or at least just entertain you guys for the hour, hour and a half, two hours, however long the show is. Also, go to WayneAndMerch.com. Pick up some of our hoodies, our shirts, our new designs are all out and available there. And uh, working on some more stuff. There's some hats as well to go with those hoodies. You guys can look like bank robbers. Boom, boom, boom. Yep, beautifully done. And go that's at WayneAndMerch.com. John, take us away, bud. For everyone out there, I hope you have a great week. I know there's no real fights for you to watch on TV, but you can sit back and take a look at some of the things in the past. Have fun with it, and we will see you. Hello, the AFC Championship game is on, buddy. Bengals Screw versus that. Kansas City. Kansas Jeez. City's going down. All right, question for you, though, before we go. Yeah, yeah. Are the Eagles going to upset the Niners? It's not really an upset. They're the, random, they're the number one seed. I was gonna the say, Eagles I don't are looking a, good, I man. I don't think that's an upset, but it is in Frisco. The is Eagles look good. Yeah, Is it, it not in Frisco? Frisco? I think that's uh, No, no, no. It's, it's in Philadelphia. Oh, oh, is it in Philadelphia? Yeah, Philadelphia is number one seed. Well, they might, they might, they might yeah, take yeah. it. Look at Bengals are coming. A hell of a team. Both teams are good. Bengals are coming, coming to Kansas City, but they've beaten us here three times. I think already. It's driving me I, crazy. I had, I had picked the Niners and the Chiefs to make it to the Super Bowl, but yeah. I'm not sure now that the Bengals, who are in the yeah. uh, playoffs against them, they're the kryptonite of the Chiefs. So they we'll are. see. Damn it! Damn it! All right, guys. Well, John, one more time. We will see ya. See ya.